What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Prettier with ESLint and Visual Studio Code. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, before we get started, there are a couple prerequisites in order to follow along with this video. The first one is that you need to have Node.js installed as it's required to install and use both Prettier and ESLint. The second is that you need to make sure that you've downloaded and installed Visual Studio Code. Now we're gonna be starting with an existing project, so you'll need to make sure that you've installed Prettier and ESLint as dev dependencies inside of your project. And finally, you'll need to make sure that you've installed both the ESLint and Prettier extensions for Visual Studio Code. Now, if you need help with any of these, I do have videos on all of these topics, which I will link down in the description below. So what exactly is our end goal here? Basically what we want is visible errors from both Prettier and ESLint inside of our code editor. So these are going to be the little squiggly yellow or red lines, depending on your setup. We want to be able to see these as we're working on our code. And the second thing we want is for VS Code to fix any formatting or linting issues whenever we save our file. Now there is a little asterisk here because you can't automatically fix every single error that occurs inside of ESLint, but we can fix a handful of them and we'll see how we can set that up. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump over into Visual Studio Code. All right, so as I alluded to a little earlier, this video is an extension of several other videos that I've done on how to install and configure ESLint, Prettier, and the associated extensions inside of Visual Studio Code. So we're going to be working with a project that already has all of these things configured. So if you need any help getting to this point, be sure to check out the videos in the description below and then head back over to this video to follow along. However, if you've used any of these tools before, I'm gonna go ahead and give a quick overview of the project so you can see where we're at and then we'll see how we can configure these tools to work together. So on my screen here, we have my package.json file open and you can see that we've installed several dev dependencies here. As far as ESLint goes, when you install and configure ESLint, Lint. What it'll do, depending on your setup, is install the ESLint package. It'll also install the ESLint JavaScript language implementation. So this gives you the JavaScript support for ESLint along with the recommended configuration. It also installs this global package when you do through the setup. And this basically just gives global identifiers to ESLint so that it doesn't think you're using variables that don't exist. And then finally, we've also installed Prettier and this is going to handle the formatting of our code. On top of that, in our extensions, we've installed the ESLint extension, which is an official extension from Microsoft. This is going to give you syntax highlighting from ESLint inside of your editor. And we've also installed the Prettier extension for VS Code. And this handles our code formatting uh, by configuring it to be the default formatter for VS Code. And that will use the Prettier installation inside of our project along with our associated config to automatically format our files. Now at a global level, we've also configured our editor to automatically format our code on save. So if we open this index file, you can see that we have a couple errors here. This one is coming from ESLint. This is the no unused vars rule. And then you can also see in this scenario here, we're also getting the capitalized comments rule, some syntax highlighting here, along with feedback from the ESLint extension. So this is very cool. We also have Prettier configured as the default formatter. So if I change my quotes here to double quotes, for example, and save the file, you can see that it automatically reformatted my code and changed it to the rule that I have specified inside of my Prettier RC file, which is to use single quotes instead of double quotes. In addition to that, we have our ESLint config, and this basically just uses the globals package along with the ESLint JavaScript implementation, sets our language options so that our globals are using the globals for the browser. And this should actually be Node since this is a Node-based project. And then we're using the JavaScript configs recommended. So this sets up the JavaScript configuration and the recommended rules by ESLint. And then we've overwritten our capitalized comment rule in order to error always, which is why we're seeing this error here inside of our file. So like I said, we've done a lot of work inside of this project in order to get it to this point. And if you need any help getting to this point, I would recommend checking out the videos that I have linked down in the description below. All right, so what do we want to do now? So when I look at this file, I want to get feedback from Prettier to let me know if I have any formatting problems that I could potentially fix beforehand, and then know that that's automatically going to be fixed when I save the file and it's going to be handled by Prettier. In addition, we also want to configure ESLint to automatically fix some of our issues on save. So ESLint can't do anything about this variable that's assigned a value and never used. It's not something that ESLint can automatically fix, but it can fix something like this where the comment should not begin with a lowercase letter. So this is something that's actually fixable by ESLint. So we'll see how we can configure ESLint to automatically run the formatter after Prettier automatically formats the file. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can get Prettier and ESLint to play nicely with each other. So the first thing that we want to do is install the ESLint config and the ESLint plugin for Prettier. And what this will do is it will add a Prettier rule to ESLint. So that way the linter will catch any format problems and through the extensions that we've installed we'll be able to see those inside of our code and then it will also turn off any conflicting rules between 
between Prettier and ESLint. So it'll leave the formatting decisions up to Prettier and it will leave the linting slash code quality decisions up to ESLint. All right, so to do this, we can go ahead and install the configuration and the plugin in one go. So what we're gonna do is say npm i dash capital D. This will install them as dev dependencies. And then we'll go ahead and install ESLint dash plugin dash Prettier. And then we also need the configuration for the plugin, which is the part that turns off any of the conflicting rules. And that's going to be called ESLint config Prettier. All right, so with those installed, we can check out our package.json. We can see that we have them installed here. And now what we need to do is go into our ESLint config and go ahead and add our plugin to our configuration. And what's cool about this newer implementation of ESLint is it's very, very easy to get this set up. So all we have to do is import the plugin. So we'll say import ESLint plugin prettier from ESLint plugin prettier. And you can see VS Code's already helping me out with that. Now, even though this auto completed, what we're going to do since we're using this newer flat configuration, we need to add the slash recommended here. So once we have that imported, all we have to do is directly underneath our JavaScript plugin, which configures the JavaScript language implementation for ESLint along with the default rules. We're going to go ahead and add our ESLint plugin prettier. Make sure we add our comma and save our file. And what this will do, like I said, it's going to add the prettier slash prettier rule, which will give us syntax highlighting inside of our code editor. So let's go ahead and see that now. If we go to our index.js file, let's go ahead and make a change to our hello, change this to double quotes. And now you can see see that we are getting an error here and the error is coming from ESLint prettier slash prettier. So any rules that we've set up in prettier will now show up as errors inside of our code, which is really, really neat. So I can automatically fix that by saving the file since I have prettier configured as my default editor. However, we want to take this a step further and not only format our file using prettier, but we want to have VS Code run ESLint on our file afterwards to automatically fix errors. So in this case, when I hit save, I would expect this comment to to automatically be capitalized. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. All right, so to have ESLint automatically format our files on save, we need to add something into our workspace settings in order to enable this feature. Now you can add it in at the global level, but I recommend when making changes like this to your project to apply these changes on a project by project basis. That way you can know that it's enforced not only on your own machine, but it'll also be enforced on anybody else's machine who happens to work inside of this code base. So what we need to do here is make some modifications to our settings.json file, which usually lives inside of a folder called .vscode. So if in your code base, you don't see this .vs code folder, there's a good chance it just doesn't exist or it might be hidden from view. You can always double check to see if it's not hidden from view by typing ls-a, and this will give you all of the different files and folders that are inside of your project. And if you don't see anything in here called .vs code, that basically means you don't have that folder inside of your project. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create this folder manually. Since this setting is not really available inside of the settings editor in VS Code, it's a little bit more of a custom setting. And like I mentioned, and there's no UI for it. So we're gonna have to do this manually. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here into our file explorer, go ahead and create a new folder called .vs code. Inside of this folder, we're gonna go ahead and create a new file called settings.json. And then inside of this settings.json file, what we're gonna do is add a key called editor. And you can see that VS Code is helping us out here, giving us all the various properties that we can use. So it's going to be editor code actions on save and that's going to be the key and for our object values we're going to add another key here called source dot fix all and the a on all is capital dot eslint and you can see visual studio code intellisense is trying to help us out here I'm just going to finish typing it and then on the other side of that it's going to be colon and then we have a couple different options here always explicit and never and we're going to go ahead and set this to explicit. All right. And this, what this will do is it will run this formatting when we explicitly save our file and it's not going to try to do it in any other scenario. So we want basically formatting on save and then we want ESLint to go ahead and fix anything that needs fixed after the formatting is complete. All right. And with that change, we can head back over to our index file and you can see here that we have this comment here, which should be capitalized per the error that we're getting from ESLint. So if I go ahead and save the file now, you can see that it automatically capitalized the comment and the little squiggly error goes away. And so now as I'm coding, I get real time feedback inside of my editor and I get auto formatting and auto fixing of fixable ESLint errors directly inside of VS Code. All right, and that is gonna do it for this video on how to configure Prettier and ESLint with Visual Studio Code. As always, thank you so much for coding along with me today. 
If you like this video and found this information valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're going to be learning a lot more about web development, including JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and everything else in between. So if that's what you're into, I would love to have you along for the journey. Until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next